then the third one is Nafsul Mutma'inya. Mutma'inya. Uh, Mutma'inya is, what can I say? Mutma'inya. Some people will call it uh, peaceful or tranquil. Some people will say uh, pleased. Some people will say pleased. satisfied. Satisfied, yes, that's satisfied. Yes, satisfied. Mutman and Gata they use this as some word. Ah, satisfaction. Thank you. Satisfied. Satisfied self. The three types of the self. Allah will talk about this in the Quran. Nafsul Amar Bissu, Nafsul Awama, Nafsul Mutma'inna. I'm running out of space, no? And then we have. Um, What's the second one? Lawama, uh, self reproaching. Self reproaching. And then I'm going to put this up to the satanic, uh, the bestial. Predatory, predatory, and the angelic. I will talk about this. This is something Imam Ghazali used to explain these, huh? and explain these. So they all, inshallah, will go through that. I think it's important. So, okay. So we'll start with this first, inshallah. The four types of thoughts that come to you. Because I call this khawatir, the types of thoughts that come to you. So um, you will experience different impulses, right? Different impulses that drive you. What makes you get up in the morning, how you decide what to do, how you decide whom to meet, how you speak to people. Sometimes this becomes habits, uh, habitual. Uh, but before they became habits, something made it become a habit. Actually, habits are very hard to break, right? So we try to have good habits. Now, um, and the types of thoughts that come to you, our teachers have said you can roughly classify them into four types. Shaitani is very easy to understand. These are devilish whisperings. And the shaitan comes and starts whispering. Uh, usually they are all the time not usually negative sometimes they can be very sweet but it's satanic for example for somebody who um, uh, satan is very clever you know for someone who gets up for tahajjud every night to pray and say for example he was at the mosque for isha and he wants to come home and sleep so he can get up for tahajjud a sweet voice can come and say, why don't you stay here a little longer, pray a little more, <laughs> go home, stay more in the masjid, it's good for you. <laughs> and you can end up staying till midnight and you can't get up at the hajjah. So Satan can sometimes be very sweet. Uh, and Aulia Allah, you know, uh, have met Shaitan, some of them. Sayyid Abdul Qadir Jilani talks about meeting him, say this, many of them. Uh, he's very handsome, very immaculately presented. He's the arch con man. If you think of a con man, that is Satan. Wants to trick you, a trickster. Nothing to be feared. Nothing to be feared. Right? What we fear is Allah. <laughs> we fear Allah. If we get on Allah's wrong side, nobody can save us. Even sh sh Shaitan will run. <laughs> Yes, in his is Allah says that in the Quran. Satan says, I didn't have anything to do with this. I just told you, you obeyed, I'm going. <laughs> we fear Allah's anger. We do fear that. We don't fear shaitan. Shaitan is a con man, right? Very handsome. Sometimes very sweetly. Sometimes whispering evil things. That person hates me. That person is trying to do evil to me. They are like this, they are like that, they are like that, right? But always only able to whisper only able to whisper. So generally when they come to you with something that is going to lead you to something negative, you understand this is shaitani. 
Nafsani is from the self. The nafs, the self. Now the self is actually the hardest thing to overcome. Our teachers have told us overcoming the self is like overcoming 70 shayateen. It's much easier to stop the whisperings of shaitan. Stopping our self, our ego, I want this, very hard, very hard. Overcoming the self is incredibly difficult because the self is strong. Allah created it with, with a certain um, uh, determination not to, to want to choose for once. I mean, Allah gave free choice. Uh, a Muslim is someone who gives the choice back to Allah and says, I don't want it. Ya Rabbi, you gave it to me, you take it. You tell me what to do, I will do it. Uh, Malakani is angelic. Angelic thoughts, when they come to you, generally will inspire to, you to do good. Maybe give some charity, look after someone who is sick, wake you up. They will, they will fill you with a, an immense amount of light and happiness. Those who have experienced it know. Suddenly you do something you weren't intending to, you do some good. You fill with like bright light, a happy energy. That's a Malakani. The angels have whispered. They also whisper. They don't just leave us. And the higher you attain in closeness to Allah, the more angels he will put around you to help you. Actually, I don't know if I, I don't know who I was saying to, but one of the reasons in uh, Shamayl Tirmidhi, Imam, Imam Tirmidhi Shamayl, maybe I think Razi Imam was here. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to walk, he makes his companions go ahead. He's a leader who leads from the back. Not at all concerned what people say about him. His concern is that his followers attain their true self. That's what a true teacher is. He doesn't care about what they say about that person. He would always walk behind his followers, never in front. Sunday, someone asked him, he said, there are so many angels who walk behind me, I want to give them space. So he can see all of them. And the higher you go, the more you will see angels. Small children see angels. When you reach a high state with Allah, some people on their deathbed, they will see angels. Because now the Malakut is apparent again. The Mulk has gone to where it's supposed to be. Now, so the higher you attain in closeness to Allah, the more Allah will surround you with angels. Every Muslim has, of course, we have the two who write. But generally in the morning you have four in the front, four at the back. They change their shift during Asr and Fajr time. Right? There's a whole subject called angels in Islam, if you're studying Islamic. It's a beautiful subject. I knew a brother once who specialized in the angels. He's always, his face is glowing, you know, when you study about Allah's angels. Allah, Allah bless him. Um, so Allah increases that. Four in the morning, four at night for our protection. They come at Fajr and Asr time, which is why it's good to be awake when they come. And when you reach a certain level, you can actually see them coming and the others going. They change their shift. As you reach higher and higher with Allah, more and more angels will come. And of course, we know that when we sit in gatherings of dhikr, gatherings where the Quran is recited, our angels come. They love to hear it, which is why we try to attend these gatherings as much as possible. Because we know we want to be an angelic company. So the angels will whisper and they will help us. This is common knowledge to our ancestors. Mm. This is why we are told, if you know there is a dhikr gathering, go and just stay. You don't even have to participate. You don't need to know anything. Stay because the angels will benefit you. Now, Rabbani, lordly thoughts, they are strong. Uh, they can be of two types, a constriction or an expansion. A constriction is when you're held, tightly held, and it's very scary, it's a very traumatic experience to go through that. And you have no choice in the matter. A Rabbani thought, if it comes upon you, Allah has chosen you to do this, it's a command. This is, now Allah is being with you as your Lord, your master, your maker. Allah is always that. But out of his mercy, he doesn't show it all the time. Out of his tender love. If he were to show it all the time, we would have no more free choice. Right? Because this is God. This is not another human being we can reason with. Or even an angel. This is God. You can't escape God. God's power is unescapable. 
So they can be expansions or constrictions. And ex uh, constriction is very difficult. When a constriction comes upon you and you are commanded to do something, you have no choice, you better do it, or you're in trouble with Allah. Mm -hmm. All the prophets and the and the messengers and the awliya Allah, they go through constrictions. And then they don't care what the what the world thinks of what they have to do, they know. Because Allah says, even in the Quran, uh, in a place Allah says to Muhammad, if you don't do what I tell you, who you nobody can save you from me. And people who know Allah know this. They fear Allah. It's a good fear. It's a fear that keeps them mustaqim on the straight path. That's a good fear. An expansion is a sort of a, you will feel your chest will really expand and Allah's expansion comes that's also lordly people who experience this they say some of the awliya Allah say I looked inside my heart I saw the whole solar system I was so wide all of knowledge was poured into me I could see everything and this is a state that is also that's a beautiful state um, yeah. And that state feel makes you, it's an unbelievable feeling when Allah gives that state to whom he chooses. Now, so Rabbani and Malakani are fairly easy. How do you know the difference between Nafsani and Shaitani? Right? How do you know the difference? For example, you want to wake up for Fajr or Tahajr and you can't get up. Or when you're trying to get up, all these thoughts come. It's too cold, I'm too tired, I need, for example, right? There are many other examples. So how do you know the difference? Is this from myself? Is this from shaitan? So we say if it is from yourself, it will be repetitive. Like a little child, you know, three, four, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, I want the ice cream, mommy, I want it, I want it, I want it. No, it's not good for you, I want it. It's too cold, I want it. <laughs> I'll give you something else, I want it, <laughs> I want. I want. This is the nafs. I want. Very difficult to break that I. We have to go from being people of I want to Allah, what do you want me to do? You tell me, I will do. You, what do you want? I am here as your servant. I hear, I obey. Samayana wa ta'ana. That's how the companions are with Muhammad. That's how he was with Allah. That's how Sayyidina Musa was with Allah. All the messengers. Rabbi, you tell, I, you command, I do. You are Lord, I am servant. We tend to live our lives these days as, Astaghfirullah, Allah protect us. If I may say this, uh, sometimes we tend to go to Allah as if he is there to serve our needs. When we need help, oh Allah, help me. When we are sick, oh Allah, heal me. When we need a job, oh Allah, give me this. Right? Never, oh Allah, what do you want me to do? You tell me, I will do. You choose for me, I will be happy with it. You give me this, this is better for me than anything else I want. Hmm? So we have to be very careful that we don't, we don't, we are there to ask Allah to help us. Oh Allah, give me, I need this, I need. But it's different to I want. Remember the say, dua of Sayyidah Zakaria? He never said, I want a child because I want to have a child. He said, no, this is my concern. I have trouble with, I don't know who's going to look after all my responsibilities after I'm gone. And you have never let, you have never left me without helping me. So his concern was, how can I better fulfill me being a servant to you? Give me what I need. To help me, say the Musa salam, when the command came to him, go to Fir'aun and tell him to worship me. He said, yeah, "Give me a supporter. Right? Give me, give me somebody to be a companion to me. Remove the impediment from my speech." So all they ask is so that they can fulfill their mission. Right? This is the way we should ask. Does this, he'll say, if you're trying to wake up, for example, you come and say, it's really, really cold, you should, you should sleep a little bit, it's, you might fall sick if you get up. So 
so you say no that's nonsense i have to get up then he might say you know if you get up at this time and you pray you'll be too tired and maybe you'll miss <laughs> then you say no that's not going to work i have to get up uh, then then you say you know you don't really need to you pray so much before your lord does so shaitan's it's always whisper it'll always change what comes to you will change because shaitan doesn't know you right so that's one way you tell which is shaitani, which is nafsani. Now, when you know it's shaitani, you know how to respond. You say, Audu billahi mina shaitani rajim. And you get up immediately. Shaitan vanishes. The word of the word from Allah, they will, if you can see the shayati, Allah's word, they, they disintegrate. Uh, literally, they will dissolve. They're very scared of Allah's word. If you know it's nafsani, you say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Oh Allah, redeem me. I have returned to you. I'm returning to you. Don't leave me with my nafs. So now you know how to respond, right? So if you know the appropriate response, it's very easy for you to get through uh, these difficulties. So that's one thing that's, that's important to know, the difference between nafsani and shaitani. What's the response for nafsani? Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Now, if you don't 